Hello strategy gaming enthusiasts, my name is Alzebo HD, and in today's video, we will cover how to play Karabakh, by far the hardest starting nation in the game. This Armenian one-province nation is all that is left of the once mighty medieval monarchy of the Bagratini Kingdom. In this guide, we will cover how to bring Armenia Karabakh from ruin, restore its formable nation, and flex on your friends by obtaining one of the rarest achievements in the game. But before the comment section tells me that Byzantium or Haida are harder, let's explore what makes an Armenian attempt so arduous. First of all, Karabakh starts off as a vassal of Karakayanlu, which outnumbers their military 7 to 1, and that's before they find allies. This effectively means gaining independence is more or less impossible, that is, unless if you have DLC. If you own Conquest of Paradise or El Dorado, you can use the Support Independence mechanic to attempt to alleviate your sorrowful situation, but even with this paid feature, most nations are still unlikely to help your hopeless holdings. Without DLC, you can still become independent through luck or by RNG, like declaring war on Kairokayanlu when they are engaged in another war. But this brings up another limit. You can't declare an independence war when you have a liberty desire of less than 50%, and there's no manual way to increase your own liberty desire. You'll have to pray to RNGesus and rely on Karakayanlu getting ran into the ground, and even this isn't a guarantee to obtain the LD to break free. It's entirely RNG, which makes the DLC the only guarantee of Armenian decree. To make matters more difficult, you'll also have to speedrun, as even your survival is a race against the clock. Your Turkic Oku's overlord can diplomatically annex you within 10 years, and even if you pull a surprise Spartacus and obtain freedom, you'll have the Ottoman Empire, Egyptian Mamluk, Iranians, steppe hordes, and Russians to look forward to on a border near you, and they're all great powers in 1444. As the only Coptic Armenian nation in the game, you'll also suffer opinion malices with your neighbors, but anything van be possible if you put your mind to it. Armenia will rise again, and it's time that we're Karabakh in business. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Browsing the internet without a VPN is like playing EU4 without a map, and leaves you vulnerable to foreign claims and cookie gases bellies. With Atlas VPN, you can explore the web anonymously, unlock international content on your favorite streaming platforms, and even get better deals on airfare and train tickets. As a US expat living in France, I use Atlas VPN to switch my French IP, which allows me to buy goods and services online using the cheaper US dollar. Right now, there's a massive sale on Atlas VPN, with three-year plans as low as $139 a month. This is the best deal on the market and protects you from malware, trackers, and ads while offering blazing fast speeds that you can use across all of your devices. For a limited time, you can get a 3-year plan for $139 a month with a special 30-day money-back guarantee. To support the channel and our sponsor, be sure to protect yourself today and check out the link in the description box below. After we select Karabakh and play as them in Iron Man mode, we will open the Diplomacy Manager and check who will support our independence. Normally, some combination of the Mamluks or Akayanu are only a hundred or so acceptance away from assisting you, in which case you should send a diplomat to increase relations with them. Your other diplomat can be used to build up a spy network in Karakayanlu, and as a Coptic nation, we will now select the Core Cost Reduction Blessing. Before unpausing your game, be sure to also summon the Diet of your Estates, and seize Crownland along with selecting estate bonuses. I recommend the Religious State Privilege to increase monthly admin power gain. We will also build two infantry to double our military forces, which will help improve our chances of foreign aid. If you're lucky, like we are in this campaign, Karakayanlu might invade, or get invaded by a neighbor, which will make them weaker, increase your liberty desire, and get you closer to Egypt supporting your independence. In the meantime, be sure to fabricate claims on as many cities as you can from our spy network. To speed up our process of political PR, we can scornfully insult our overlord to increase relations with their rivals. 
Eventually, our diplomat will hit relations capacity, and if you're close enough, you can take out loans to fire advisors with the hope of finding and hiring a diplomatic reputation advisor. While this puts us into debt, with any luck, we are now supported by Egypt, and we can declare war for our independence only five years into our campaign. At this point, we only have four or five infantry, so taking any forts is Nagorno gonna happen, and I'd advise you to raid surrounding cities while your ally does the heavy lifting. Your first priority and war goal is to hold your capital, which might have been harder if our overlord wasn't occupied by every sultan in the suburb. While waiting for war score, you should fabricate claims on Akayanlu and the states you will soon border. With 100 war score, it's time to press peace, and we will take all of the Armenian cultured provinces that we can, but take a pass on Ganja, at least for now. In the space of 8 years, we've obtained independence, multiplied our size by 5, and have liberated Yerevan, which gives us yet another Coptic Christian blessing. But if you want to form the nation of Armenia, we'll have to manifest our destiny to the West. The first roadblock to reforging our rightful realm is through Akayanlu, and you should fabricate claims on them from the spy network you've been building throughout your independence war. While coring your provinces, build up as much military as you can afford, and begin fabricating claims on Samotska to your northwest. To finally form Armenia, we'll need to liberate their province of Lamsia, and the further away Adana area of Anatolia. Luckily for us, Samotska is allied to Dolkadir, which neighbors Adana, allowing us to take out both in one war. These tiny tags stand no chance against Armenian annexation, but we can't core the Syrian state. Instead, we'll vassalize Dolkadir and integrate them later on, while taking all of Samotska under direct control. Our new vassal hungers for Kayanlu cores, and with our claims in Akayanlu, we can declare war to annex eastern Anatolia. With Mamluk support, our combined forces walk like an Egyptian across the western Turkic tribe, but soon Turkey of another variety are spotted. The Ottoman Empire is expanding eastwards, in direct contrast to the westward liberations of our lands, and before we're able to take out Akayanlu, annexed our vassal's cores to spite our success. Split in two, Akayanlu was partly annexed, and soon served as scraps to our young Turk tributary in Dolkadir. As fortune would have it, our new minion has cores and claims on Ramazan, who themselves possess the required province of Adana. If you are in the position to take this province before the Ottomans occupy it, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. While we now control all the land needed to form Armenia, coalitions are coming, and we now border the Ottoman Empire, which is the strongest nation in the game. If you're pitted against the Green Giant, you'll need allies to survive Sultanic subjugation. When you're at peace, check the diplomatic menu to see if larger European nations are ready to accept your friend request. With your larger size and Christian religion, it's likely Poland, Austria, Hungary, or Venice can be made into an ally, so be sure to hire a diplomatic advisor and increase relations to make this a reality. Unfortunately, the Islamic Emirates of Asia Minor have not taken kindly to our righteous requisitions, and sooner or later, you'll experience a coalition. In our case, a weekend ganja getaway took a turn for the worse, as our neighbors in Bitlis called in the police coalition, pitting hundreds of thousands of souls on the line in a world war that spanned the continental divide. Once you find yourself in this situation, your first priority should be to micromanage your military and surgically strike smaller sized forces within your borders. You can gain waves of war score by winning the majority of your battles, so be sure to only fight the Ottomans if they are outnumbered while you prioritize stack wiping the soldiers of smaller states. Speaking of smaller states, if Russia joins in and hates you too, so be it. Your goal is to end any coalition war as fast as possible, and if war score isn't enough, you should attempt to conquer the capital of the coalition leader. 
This has the effect of lowering their war enthusiasm, making them much more likely to consider your proposals. That and the fact that over 300,000 people died in under six years. With the Coalition coast clear, we're finally free to finish up our family trip in Ganja, and nine years later, Kayalu is finally cleansed from the Caucasus. As we've just seen, there will be many trials and tribulations in an Armenian campaign, and I'd recommend following several strategies in order to increase your chances of success. Once you've annexed a portion of Anatolia, I'd suggest moving your capital as quickly as you can. This is because your starting city is in the Asian region, which prevents you from acquiring most institutions automatically. If you move your capital to a European province, like Azerum, it will allow you to gain the Enlightenment without development forcing the institution, and gives the added benefit of allowing you access to assigning trade companies throughout the Asian continent. By this point in time, we can also annex any subjects we've acquired through forced vassalization, and in our case, we'll begin the process of annexing Dolkadir for the provinces needed to form Armenia. If you hire an inquisitor and set your province edict to religious conversion, you can also begin to convert your provinces, like Ganja, to the burning bush of Coptic Christianity. If small nations border you and lack alliances, you can also make sure to liberate them before they form a coalition. But sometimes, bad RNG will strike, and you'll get an Armenian moment, which can only be fixed by DLC disinheritance or backing up your save files. Some sovereigns can't be saved, and some economies are bound for bankruptcy. Remember that debt is only a number, and don't be afraid to take out loans through your estates as your economy is downright terrible. You'll need all the money you can get to embrace the renaissance, which you can do if you've already moved your capital. Be sure to also royal marry any European allies you might have, as when you die, you might inherit a strong dynasty to later claim thrones in Europe. For national ideas, I recommend choosing religious and offensive as your first two, though your national bonus does include increased missionary strength, so you have more flexibility to choose something else, like economic or administrative ideas. At this point, you could wait out your subject's annexation, form Armenia, and call it a day, but we're only getting started, and it's time now to obliterate the Ottomans and spit fire on the so-called sublime port. Taking on the Turks solo is self-righteous suicide, so be sure to only declare war when your allies are willing and able to join for either favors or promises of land. Surging in and tanking the Ottomans is off the table, but luckily your AI allies are competent cannon fodder, and your focus should be to hold the war goal as much as possible while adopting defensive positions within your mountainous monarchy. Over time, our aggressive allies allow us to separate piece the co-belligerents. The expendable Egyptians permit us to liberate our vassals' lands, and an allied offensive leads to Anatolia falling to the Armenian army. With our allies separate piecing out of the war and Turkish death stacks on the horizon, it's time to sign for peace. For our first war, we can only conquer three cores, but we'll return later on more favorable terms. While waiting for our Karabakh-to-back -back war with the Turks, we'll use this peaceful period to claim clay and greet the generous Georgians to our north. Taking Tbilisi is easy enough, and their ally Ardabil is subjugated, with the Shahanshah of Iran now a vassal of the Armenian Empire. But prolonged peace was never an option, and we'll soon set out our Persian polity to pursue their potential in a job, while Emirati will fall to the combined conquests of Ottoman and Armenian annexation. The time of truce is now behind us, and if you're chaining wars, you can't offer the Ottomans any time to join a coalition. The sequel is similar to Part 1, and we'll call in our allies to crusade against Constantinople. 
you'll need any and all advantage, and I'd recommend calling in a golden era to offset the morale of our Muslim nemesis, though events like the last jousting tournament can also turn the tide, for when the winged hussars finally arrive. With Trabzon taken, the Turks are unable to push into our territory. In fact, the Sultan has a propensity to search for Santa Claus in Eastern Europe, and occasionally leave Anatolia undefended, and our Dolkadir subject state was finally annexed into Armenian hands. With Ankara finally taken and the Bosphorus blocked, it's time to build a prison for the Ottomans to live in, and block their access to the Black Sea. Anatolia is at last secured, and our subjects' annexation of Adana allows us to reform the ancient kingdom of Armenia. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You now have claims over Eastern Asia Minor, and can begin consolidating your way towards great power status. It's time to take out the tiny Turkic tags that surround you, and spread Armenian culture to Georgia, Anatolia, Azerbaijan, and beyond. But to truly protect your land and bring the system of sultans down, it's a good idea to conquer the Caspian coast and say Sahal to Shirvan. While your own specific strategies might differ, it's a good idea to neuter the Ottoman Empire between truce timers. If you give them peace, they'll join a continental coalition as soon as they can, so it's best to tag team them in turns with your European and Egyptian allies. From this position, we could retake Constantinople for Coptic Christianity, reform Rome, or colonize the Americas with Kardashian colonists. But it's 1522 and our campaign is over, so now it's time to explore an overview of the world. By the early 16th century, Armenia has a risen and is itself the preeminent Coptic Christian kingdom. The yoke of Yerevan have subjugated the Shihansha of Arbadil, and thus have claimed to invade Iran and Persia. This prayerful polity adheres entirely to Armenian apostolic Christianity, and, with more multipliers than Moses, can convert any conquered county in under a year. The Armenian people form 55% of the population of our fiefdom, and efforts are expended to make Anatolia Armenian again. Our once one province nation now possesses the ninth largest army in the world, holds Azerum, the fourth most developed capital in the world, and even leads global production of wool with only 1% of the market share. Armenia is allied to Poland, Egypt, and Transoxiana, which together form a coalition that contains any Ottoman ambitions. Further abroad, the world has largely retained our own historic timeline, though France has set about annexing Les Anglais and has even liberated Londres. Further to the east, the Danish have not let go of their recently requisitioned Baltic Uralic holdings. Ivan has not yet sacked Novgorod, and the Americas lie largely uncolonized, though there are several huge indigenous federations. In terms of technology, Armenia is tied as the most advanced in the world, with 9 admin, 10 diplomatic, and 10 military technologies. In terms of idea sets, we've opted to embrace religious and offensive national ideas, though this does offend outlying nations who have united in coalition against us. They're simply Nagorno going back, and soon Armenia will ascend across Anatolia, invade Iran, and convert Christendom to the one true faith. That being said, maybe you believe another nation is more difficult than Karabakh, in which case I invite you to let me know in the comment section below. You could suggest the next nation or challenge I play, so be sure to drop some suggestions. But if you're looking for other guides to challenging campaigns, this channel has you covered. From the secluded start of Siberian tribes to the never-ending nightmare that is Navarra in 1444, I invite you to check out my playlist of EU4 guides in the card at the top right of your screen. Before ending the video, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this far and supporting the YouTube algorithm. If you'd like to see more strategy gaming content and want to help the channel grow, I'd also suggest fabricating a claim on the like button and colonizing the channel subscription box. This video was made in partnership with Atlas VPN, and if you'd like to learn more about today's sponsor, I invite you to check out the link in the description box below.
If you want to boost relations even more, consider donating to our Patreon, buying games through our Nexus Channel store, or donating basic attention tokens to Alzebo HD through the Brave browser. We've saved Armenia, so now it's time to roll the credits.